Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Manchester Square webinar. I'm your host, Matthew Horncastle, and thank you very much for coming. Now, a small elephant in the room, I have a small cold that would um, kill a normal man that I got in Singapore. And I'm, according to my ring, I'm running at a six out of 10, but hopefully I can give you an eight or nine out of 10 webinar. Now, the legal disclaimer, every good presentation needs a good legal disclaimer. And our legal disclaimer, you can see the full disclaimer there, but the, the crux of the disclaimer is we are not financial advisors. This isn't financial advice. And we recommend you seek your own financial advice before making an investment decision. Now, down the bottom of your toolbar, you will see a chat icon. So throughout the presentation, if you can think of any questions, we would love you to put it down in the chat icon. And then right at the end, I will answer all of your questions because the team will read them out to me. So just anything you can think of, anything you want more clarification on, put it in that chat bar and I'll make sure I answer your questions at the end of this presentation. So our agenda today, I'm going to do a quick introduction to myself because I believe that when you receive information from someone, you should, you should do your research into that person. I'm going to discuss why I think you should buy in Christchurch CBD. Then I'm going to discuss the Manchester Square development. And then we're going to do our FAQs. So it's going to be a fun, fun presentation for me and for you guys. So a quick introduction to me. My name is Matthew Horncastle. I'm from a property family. I come from one of those families where everyone is in construction. Mother, father, aunties, uncles, granddad, cousin. Uh, probably most noted would be my father who owned Horncastle Homes, which was the largest privately owned builder in New Zealand at one point before Williams Corporation and before he retired. Uh, the reason I say that is because I've been immersed in property since I was about this big. There's pictures of me on building sites in those baby carrying backpacks. So the property industry is something that I've been exposed to my entire life. I'm a qualified builder. So from the ages of 16 to 20, I spent my time working on building sites, learning from the ground up the craft. I've owned a business since 2011. I think myself to be a thought leader in the property space. Um, or I just post a lot, <laughs> one of the two is real. Um, I've personally invested into Christchurch property and property as a whole. I've purchased new homes, I've renovated homes, I've purchased homes from Williams Corporation, I own commercial buildings. I've got most property assets you can think of, um, I've bought or purchasing. Um, I have a large portfolio myself uh, that I've done incredibly well from partially because property is just a fantastic asset, um, but partially because I have purchased and maintained the right assets. And I'm a co-founder in Williams Corporation. Now, 30 seconds of Williams Corporation. Williams Corporation, we build residential townhouses that are affordable to buy, affordable to live in, and affordable to maintain, where you can live, work, and play. Williams Corporation is currently the largest privately owned builder in New Zealand and the second largest builder in all of New Zealand based on building consents issued for a rolling 12 months. So that is why the information in this presentation hopefully will provide as much value as possible. Now a little bit about Christchurch and before I rattle off the points that I'm supposed to, I really believe in Christchurch partially because my father lived there and I spent a lot of time there. Um, I moved to Christchurch to accelerate my career after the earthquake, but I really believe in Christchurch. It is a fantastic place to live. A few years ago, it was ranked in the top few most livable cities in the world. Everything's very convenient. We've got fantastic assets and infrastructure. I'm someone that travels the world um, partially running Williams Corporation. I spent last week in Singapore. I'm currently in our Cebu office in the Philippines. And every time I get back to Christchurch, it's just like the weight of the world comes off your shoulders. Everything's so easy. It's easy to go places. It's easy to get restaurants. It's just a beautiful, lovely city. So into my points, um, the earthquake cleared nearly 75% of the CBD. So this gave us an opportunity to rebuild a world-class CBD, and it gave Williams Corporation the opportunity to purchase the land that we do. 
pretty much all of the central city land that we have purchased, I don't think we would have been able to buy without the earthquake. So there's been a $40 billion rebuild in the Christchurch CBD, which is absolutely huge. And I'm going to talk about a few key assets. So we've got the $600 million stadium. So that's a 35,000 seat covered stadium. We've got a $475 million convention center. That's a two and a half thousand delegate seated venue. And I think they can have 5,000 delegate uh, functions. So it's an absolutely amazing piece of infrastructure. We have the $350 million Metro Sports Centre. That's the largest of its kind in New Zealand. All of these are in the CBD. Like this is normally, uh, for those that have been to other cities, via, when you go to the stadium, you have to get on a train or get in a cab for an hour out the city and it's three hours to come back. Like to have this in the city is just absolutely fantastic. Um, there is a $483 million hospital redevelopment. The hospital, um, the, the Canterbury District Health Board is the largest employer in the South Island. We have a $1.2 billion Christchurch University uh, rebuild. And Hagley Park is one of the largest central city parks in the world. 2,000 people work every day in the Justice Precinct. That's in the center of the city. So like you can see here, one, it's a very tragic thing, the earthquakes, and I don't ever want my presentations to take away from the tragedy, but we have ended up with a fantastic city, but it's only, in my opinion, just starting. Like a lot of these assets have only just finished or just starting, and you can see the city really taking shape. Now, we were very, very, very early on investing in the city. I remember purchasing land pretty much straight after the city was reopened. And I would take customers on walks through the CBD explaining what's going to be everywhere. And there was no one. Like there's videos. If you go into the early days of myself and Blair's social media, there's videos of us walking through the CBD. None of the key assets that have been rebuilt were there. And we're wandering around saying, oh, this will be here, this will be there, this will be there. Uh, so, yeah, we've been heavily invested in the CBD since early on. And it is something, property in Christchurch City is something that I absolutely believe in. So there's some pictures of these assets. So I personally live, hopefully you can see my cursor. So this is the Cardboard Cathedral right here. This is the 35,000 seat covered stadium. You can see the beautiful Port Hills in the background. And I live right here. So I overlook Latimer Square. I'm right in the hustle and bustle. I was one of the primary affected parties for the stadium. And they sent me a submission asking what my comment was on the noise pollution. And I'm like, just build it. Let's rock. So... Yeah, that's going to be absolutely fantastic. Every single day when I walk to work at Williams Corporation, I walk past Latimer Square and past the Manchester development, which I'm going to present to you in a minute. So the sports centre, Metro Sports Centre looks fantastic. The university is a key asset. This is a world-class university um, and absolutely should be incorporated into a, the investment-making decision. Convention centres finished. It looks fantastic. Margaret Mayhe Playground's absolutely fantastic. And the Riverside Market and the Terraces is a fantastic place to shop and to eat and to enjoy your life. Now, Manchester Square. This is our largest development that we have done to date. 113 dwellings, a mixture of apartments, commercial and terrace living located right in the heart of Christchurch. The project looks fantastic. I'm really, really proud of our architectural team. They've just done something really, really special. This will be uh, a landmark in Christchurch uh, for a long, long time. So you can see down the bottom here, so this fronts, what we're looking at in the top render is the view from Manchester Street. So down the bottom, we have our shops. So there is, I think, eight shops in total, all small tenancies. So we're going to see um, pharmacies, dairy, hairdresser, all those, all those amenities that you want right at your doorstep when you live in a complex like this. And then we have a mixture of 
terraced housing, which are on fee simple titles. We also have apartments and obviously those commercial spaces as well. But the project looks fantastic. It'll be a concrete building uh, and it's going to be really, really cool. So a little bit about the block of land. Now, this land was actually purchased by the government after the earthquake, and it was originally divested to Fletcher's, but as you're aware, Fletcher's haven't built as quickly as they originally planned. So it got redivested from Atakaro, and we were very fortunate to be chosen as the development partner. So there's a few reasons why I bring that up. The first is this location is so good. Like behind where the camera's being taken, there's the Brown Fletcher townhouse development. Next to that is the Christchurch Club. So this road here on the left, this here is Hereford Street. And if you go right down Hereford Street for another two blocks, you hit the strip. So that's where the terraces, the bars, the Riverside Market is. So that's only two blocks away. And Worcester Street on the other side, if you go down half a block, you hit the uh, cathedral. And then when you go around the cathedral, half a block, you hit the convention center. So I can't stress how centrally located this is. Someone just has their mic on. So yeah, it's it's something that it's a location that I'm very proud of. All the sides are accessible. So you have Hereford Street here, uh, Manchester Street here, Worcester Street here, and this is one of the Atakaro belts. So this will always be a park and a access. So that's really, really cool. So I'm just going to keep... Now, this is what the project looks like from the top down. So you can see Hereford Street, Manchester Street, Worcester Street, and Hiranui Lane. And so these these houses around the bottom here, these are townhouses on fee simple titles, which is probably what Williams Corporation is absolutely famous for. Buildings one and three are these six story apartment buildings. So on the ground floor, we have the shops around the outside. Now these units here are really, really cool. These are accessible units. So if you have someone um, where that has accessibility issues or an older person, these are fantastic assets for them, these internal ones. And then we have the lift and there is five floors of apartments, so six floors total. Building two is really interesting. It is, it is still a unit title, but it is a shop on the bottom and a wee two bedroom townhouse on top but sold separately. So that's a really interesting asset. And you can see all of them open up on this communal space that we've made just really intimate with lots of cool seating areas. So you can always come down there and have a seat in a, in a private space, um, well, public private space to read a book and enjoy a beautiful city. So the layout's fantastic. You can see lots of big spaces between the buildings, a mixture of um, six-story and three-story buildings. Very, very cool and very, very functional. Now, again, I'm just going to deep dive into the location and just have a look at how centrally located this is. So we've got the, so this, this box to the side, that is the Latimer Square. We then have the stadium, you can see Little High's Eatery, the, the um, Polytech, supermarkets, South Centre Shopping Mall. We've got the Recreational Centre, the Hospital, the Botanic Gardens. This here is Hagley Park, Christchurch Art Gallery, Christchurch Town Hall, the Convention Centre, Cathedral Square, Library, Margaret Mahey Playground. So <laughs> the location's absolutely fantastic. So now a little bit about the price point. So this is the apartment. So the apartments start from uh, $649,000 New Zealand for a one bedroom and two bedrooms start from 789,000. We believe this is really, really good value considering the location and the quality of the city. Now, also, we have OIA approval. Now, OIA stands for Overseas Investment Act. So 42 of these apartments can be purchased by international investors. 
So we only got that a few days ago. This is the first time Williams Corporation's ever had an OIA approval. So it's very, very cool that instead of being able to sell these apartments to New Zealanders, 5 million Australians, 35 million and Singaporeans, 5 million. So that totals 45 million. We can now sell them to all 7.8 billion people in the world. So that's very, very exciting. Um, and it means I think the sales will go very fast. So the terraces, we have two and three bedroom terraced houses. The two bedrooms start from 849,000 and the three bedrooms start from 959,000. Again, I see that as very good buying based on the location. And the commercial spaces start from 429,000 plus GST. Very, very cool. Very cool. So the development, there's 113 houses and we have 44% either sold or under contract. Now this development hasn't been released for very long. I'm personally purchasing in here. I'm purchasing one of the penthouses that I probably will live in. And I'm, I've sold my friends and my family into this project personally because I believe in this asset. I think the location's exceptional. And one of the key things about this asset is actually timing. Now, as you know, property, one of the key things about property is just time of your wealth accumulating. And the, the approximate time frame for delivery of this project is we've got three uh, six months left of consenting and then one and a half years of construction. So if you purchase today, you're going to take delivery in two years. And what that means for you as an investor is the New Zealand property market on average has increased 8% a year for the last 42 years, if you averaged the entire market. So what that means is you have, if you purchase what now one, we can never promise, promise capital gains, and that's not what I'm doing. But if you have, you put down a 10% deposit to purchase one of these apartments or townhouses or um, commercial spaces, and then you have, you've only put in 10% of your money. If you're a foreign buyer, you need to put in 20%. And then you've got two years of what is the market going to do. And based on my experience, I've always seen the market perform positively over a couple of years. So what is the process if you would like to buy? So what you do is you first contact a Williams Corporation client consultant. Uh, there's a lot of them on the website. They're absolutely fantastic people. You've probably been talking to one if you got into this webinar. And what you do is they'll sit down with you and they'll show you everything that's available, everything that's sold. They'll compare this development to other developments just to make sure so you're comfortable with the decision you're making. And then what you say is you say, I like that one. So let's just say you chose build, building two, unit four. So then you say, yep, I want that one. That's going to be fantastic. And you sign a conditional agreement. Now, I believe we have a fantastic buying process that is stress-free for you, the customer, because what you do is you write the unit you want to buy and you sign the contract. And what that does is that takes that unit off the market for two weeks, 14 days, 10 working days, that takes it off the market, and then you can really make sure it's right for you. So that's when you're checking with your lawyer, you're checking with your financial advisor if you have one, having a chat with your property manager, if you have another decision maker like a partner or a parent that you want to have a discussion with, you can go away in those two weeks. If you need to raise finance, you can raise finance, and you can make sure it's right for you. Now, I've sold a lot of houses to people, and normally what you're feeling is you're feeling anywhere from 60, anywhere from 50 to 70% sure. If you're 50 to 70% sure this is right for you, you should be contracting a unit. This is selling fast, and that takes the unit off the table and lets you then do that homework and get yourself to that 80, 90% sure. You're never going to get to 100, um, but 80, 90% sure is where you're at before you go unconditional. So then after that two weeks with you being happy, you say to your lawyer, yes, I'm happy. And then the lawyer will say you're unconditional. We will send you a deposit slip. 
and you pay the deposit. So for Kiwis, it is a 10% deposit. And for international investors, it is a 20% deposit. And then once we finish the property in about two years from now, we will send you the title and the code and the main and the warranty agreement, everything. And you will settle uh, five days after we send you the notice. And then we will meet you on site with a gift basket and some champagne and big smiles. And you'll be very, very happy. So yeah, that's very cool. Very simple buying process. But I really want to emphasize that I really encourage people to contract a unit if you're 50 to 70% sure. Don't try to get yourself to 90% sure without contracting a unit because then what happens, the customer will go away, do their due diligence, come back to purchase, and we've sold that unit. And this development is selling fast, and I want you to get in early and get the really, really good units. So now I'm going to open my phone and feel free to keep writing questions and I'm going to see what questions we have. Do we have any questions, Rosa? Maybe we just don't have questions or my internet's slow. One of the two. Ah, oh, here we go. Fantastic. Are you able to talk, are you able to talk briefly about other Christchurch developments you have on the horizon and estimated completion dates? Yeah, so there is a fantastic page on our website and it's called Build Updates. So you go on the Williams Corporation website, you go, I can't remember what banner it's under, but you click on build updates and it shows every development we're building. So we've currently got 48 developments we've committed to across four New Zealand cities. We actually have 50 in total if you include, include Brisbane. But yeah, we've got, and so you can see where every single development's at, a picture, what's happening on site and when it's going to be delivered. But my team's just given me a few key answers. So 66 Boronui Road is due for completion in January. That's a very cool project. I'd love to see you at the open day when we finish that. That's 82 houses. Uh, 231 Marine Parade is due for completion in July 2023. 52 Stewart Street is due for completion in December. And 19 Worcester Street is due for completion in the third quarter of 2023. And so again, I would really direct you to the uh, build updates page on our website if you want to see the other projects. We currently have 1,100 houses we have committed to building. We have 600 under construction and we are 1,100 we've committed to, 600 under construction. We have another 400 we're doing due diligence on. So we, Williams Corporation is an absolutely huge company. We're very good at what we do. If you've driven around and seen our construction sites, you'll see our delivery is very, very good. Is the development to earth is the development to an earthquake build standard similar to those in Japan? Very good question. Now, after the Christchurch earthquake, Christchurch actually led the world in a lot of this earthquake uh, structure. Uh, and engineering codes and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one of the key differences between, say, this asset and some of the Japanese buildings you're talking about is height. So in Japan, when you're talking about 50, 60, 70, 100 floor buildings, even more, you, you can't use concrete construction just because it's so tall. So the sort of structure they would use is they would use a steel structure with concrete floors, and they would actually have a weight and it would be hung from the top down the first, say, five to 10 floors with a big weighted ball in hydraulic barrel of oil. And what that means is when the earthquake, when the building moves like this, the ball is moving against the movement and it, it reduces that centrifugal force and slows down the building. Now, when you're at six stories, we don't need to calculate a whole lot of those strains. We just need the building to essentially move rigidly like this. So we have, we'll have a um, 
a, a ground strengthening where we'll do uh, gravel piles into the ground and get the ground really nice and strong and predictable. And then we have a concrete building with all of the necessary engineering and steel portals. So it's absolutely above code, but just different from those big buildings in Japan just because of the height. I'm a first time home buyer using my KiwiSaver. I've contracted unit five in building one using an investment property. Do you feel it is positive cash flow and should I do Airbnb? Right, very good question. What we can do free of charge to you, and we don't normally do this, uh, but anyone on this call today, we will. If you contract a unit, I will pay, well, the company will pay for an accountant to do a cash flow for you. So if you email your client assistant uh, what property you're purchasing and how much deposit you're planning to do, and if you're planning to rent it or Airbnb or whatever, and the rental appraisal you want to use, we can get the accountant to do a cash flow for you to show the cash position of it. Uh, I would, my gut feeling would be yes, it is cash positive. Uh, but I'd like an accountant to actually do that figure for you and show you all of that information professionally, independently, so you can see. So any of you, if you want to understand how the investment numbers of that work, you contract a unit, you have that two weeks DD, you tell us what it you're planning to use and what, how you want to use the property, and we will send that information to Angler Tomlinson and Glenn will create a cash flow for you so you can see exactly how that property is going to conform, uh, perform. Explain the tender model for apartments tenure. Does it include parking? No, it doesn't include parking. Um, the reason it doesn't include parking is because the location is absolutely exceptional. The land was very expensive and we didn't want to waste any of the space for car parks. But there is a car parking building literally across the road. So the people that live here can get easy access to car parks right across the road. Will you do a webinar on the new Brighton project or just best view through the website? We only have a handful of those left. There's we yeah this if you check our stock list and um, i would be surprised there's only maybe one or two left if you're looking at that new brighton project i would highly recommend contracting one because i don't think that's going to be around much longer i don't plan to do a webinar on it just because it's it's all all pretty much sold uh, but in hindsight i should have done one um and if you are looking to buy I would definitely recommend contracting that because we're probably down to the last 5% of units available. And I can't see any typing, so I'm going to wrap it up there. 30 minutes, nice and fast, in and out. Just to summarize, there's my personal details. The reason I'm showing you my personal details, it really shows the company that we are. If you go onto Williams Corporation and go meet the team, you can see myself and Blair our contact details, the director's first line. And it means if anything goes wrong, we are here with you. If you need, we've, we've built properties for a long time. We understand how to do our maintenance. We understand how to build a good property. We understand how to look after our customers. We are a business that's going to be here for a long time. Now, we do want your business. I would love to see you purchase here, and I'd love to be with you in two years' time on delivery. I'll actually be down at the open day, and I'll be at the construction open days to show this project. So I, I, I'm personally invested in this project. I'm very invested in Christchurch CBD. I believe in it completely, and I would love to see you as a customer as well. So again, if you want to purchase, just contact your client consultant, choose a property, put it under contract, do your due diligence, confirm, pay your deposit, and then in two years' time, you get some keys and a bottle of champagne. So thank you very much. I hope my cold didn't drag down my performance too much, but that is a 30-minute presentation on the Manchester by Matthew Horncastle. Thank you.